All right. So we are live uh, with Martin Edcock. Uh, so hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's free webinar on exploring the different ways organizations are adopting TMMI with guest speaker Martin Edcock. I'm Rex Black, president of RBCS, a worldwide testing and quality assurance firm serving clients ranging from small startups to Fortune 20 global enterprises. Since 1994, RBCS has delivered insight and confidence to hundreds of clients around the world. We have a team of international consultants that deliver customized training, consulting, and expert services for companies that are looking to improve their test and quality assurance practices. TMMI has become the leading model for test process improvement but how are organizations adopting TMMI and what issues are they addressing? So join us as we welcome our guest, uh, Martin Adcock, as he explores how organizations have adopted TMMI and are using it to improve their test process and give them a competitive edge. Martin Adcock is the Managing Director of Experimentus, a specialist consultancy organization based in the UK, who focus on providing help and advice on software quality, process improvement, and test environment management. All three very important things. As part of their test process improvement activities, Experimentus, who are a leading provider of TMMI uh, services, uh, have been using TMMI for 14 years to create solutions to support organizations worldwide in adopting TMMI locally. This includes training and a variety of assessment options and supporting test processes. We welcome hearing how Martin and his team have been helping organizations adopt TMMI at all levels. and. Uh, I'll just mention that RBCS is an experimentist licensee. We use their method to do our own TMMI assessments. If you have any questions during the course of the interview or uh, the webinar, you may submit them throughout the presentation via your webinar interface, but please note that they are answered only at the end. So let's jump right into it. Martin, take it away. Thanks very much, uh, Rex. And uh, well, it's good evening here or good afternoon uh, in the States. Um, thanks very much for the invitation to uh, look at different ways that organizations are adopting uh, TMMI. And I must admit in the 14 years that we've been doing it, um, we've seen a number of different reasons. So hopefully I can share that with you today. Um, just very briefly from a TMMI point of view, uh, Rex mentioned that we've been running TMMI work for about the last 14 years. Um, we're a small company, but we help organizations worldwide um, use TMMI and adopt TMMI. Uh, and we also provide training and licensing services. Um, a recent stat I just looked at um, within Experimentus, I think we've done about 35% of um, the certified companies on the TMI Foundation website, and our licensees have done another 35%. So we're close on 70% of the assessments have been achieved using uh, the Experimentus methods and processes. Very impressive. Thank you. We're very proud of the fact. Just very briefly, um, I would like to think uh, a number of you will know about TMMI. It's a five level staged assessment method. Um, I won't go into detail here, but uh, in our experience, um, we tend to work with companies and when they approach us about TMMI, whether it's to be certified or to do process improvement, sit down and have a conversation with them. And um, most of the companies that we work with now will initially aim for TMMI level three and then go to level five. Um, it's not something you have to do level two, then three, then four, then five. It basically is a case of understanding the maturity of your test process and choosing the right level that's right for you, either to be certified at or, or to go through process improvement. But the main key objective is really to look at um, taking you from a defect detection to a defect prevention. And that no matter whether you're using Waterfall, Agile, DevOps, et cetera, TMMI is relevant to all those software development methods. Um, the TMMI Foundation uh, did a survey back end of last year. Uh, and they very kindly lent me the um, statistics from that. And this shows you some of the business drivers that people responded to last year. Um, and it can, as you can see, there's a number of different reasons for people adopting TMMI. However, we also see organizations basically wanting to demonstrate to the business where they are. Um, we've had some organizations come to us saying, we want to get our ducks in a row and lined up so that we can say to the business, we are doing a good test process. Now we can help you 
improve things within the software development lifecycle further upstream or downstream. Other companies like to do it because um, that they might just want to have a look at a team or a project-based solution or ideally across the whole organization. However, something else that's quite common is we do find a number of companies want to work in collaboration with third party suppliers, some of the system integrators, or it might be their testing part partners. And we've seen an increasing trend on tenders for asking organizations if they are TMI certified or if they are following TMI principles. Um, and indeed, we have even seen a few contracts where it's been stated over a one or two year period for the, the organisations, the third party, to work with the suppliers, so the suppliers and the company to work together to actually achieve a certain level of certification and get the badge. And finally, an interesting one at the bottom, we, um, we worked with an organisation who had a base in the States, India and the UK, and they really wanted to understand the maturity of each, in each area. And they found pockets of excellence in each area, and from that, they were able to merge things together and end up with a fairly good test process at the end of it. The key thing that we would recommend to you is decide what you want to do. Are you looking at TMMI certification because you want the badge? Or are you looking at, at it as a process improvement activity with the option to go for certification as well and publicize the fact of where you are? And I think it's important to understand that from day one. And also to understand we work with a lot of clients and sometimes we will certify one particular area of their organization. If you look at the TMMI foundation, uh, the various companies that have been certified, you'll see them at various levels. And some of them, you know, there'll be a little note to say that is one division within the organization and one sector or one part of the business within the organization. Once you understand your goal and what you want to achieve, uh, the key thing is looking at the business drivers and then decide on the roadmap to achieve it. And this is something I want to look at and explore with you on a number of levels. Um, the roadmap can be fairly easy or fairly complicated. It all depends on where you are and what you're trying to, to, trying to achieve. The key thing is to target specific level in the roadmap to achieve the level of maturity that you want or a higher level if that's what you're trying to do. And it's being realistic about that. We've worked with numerous organizations who have come to us and said, we want you to certify us to TMMI level five. And to be honest, we've had a look and they might scrape through at level three. To be honest, on the other side, we've had an organization said, come and certify us to level three. This is a, uh, an organization we work with in China and when we looked at the process, we said, don't worry, go straight to level five. You've got a tremendous amount of maturity, really good, well-documented process, et cetera. And that's where we can bring some expertise and skills to actually give advice on the best thing to do. To address the roadmap that you want to do, obviously, if you're looking at certification, there's certain things you can do beforehand. You can look at doing some process improvement. You can look at doing a very informal team of my assessment just to get an indicative view as to where you are. You can conduct, conduct things like gap analysis, um, informal reviews, health checks, and then lead to certification. And in a minute, I'll explore a slide that goes through a number of different ways on how you can adopt some of that. But the one thing that we would say is key is within your organization, do make sure somebody does understand Tim and I. Most of the successful organizations we have, uh, have worked with and supported have a number of people who have gone through either the Tim I professional qualification or downloaded the Tim and I model from the Tim I foundation and really learned and understood how that works. It's freely available on the Tim I foundation website. It's quite a large tome of uh, a document to read, but it should give you all the information that you need. As far as roadmaps are concerned, um, I'd like to share a number of different roadmaps with you and the reasons why companies have, a, have addressed them. But the first thing is to, as I said earlier, is to understand where you are and what you're going to assess. 
Um, there's five levels of TMMI, as we say, and everybody gets level one. But the key thing is understand where you want to, what you want to achieve. And typically, most organizations, when we first engage with them, are really looking at TMMI level three. In our experience, it's the hardest level to get. Um, it means that you've got to have a lot of, you, you've got to have your uh, test process properly documented and institutionalized and being used. And you need to, need to be able to evidence that it's working in a number of different uh, projects and programs. Typically, once you got to level three, the next step is to get to level five, and that can be a much easier step. But the key thing is be realistic, find a way to benchmark yourself. So you can take the team on my method and document something yourself, or I'm sure Rex will uh, share with you at the end um, his uh, free team on my e-survey that you can complete to get some feedback as to where you are. Once you've done the assessment, it's really a case of documenting a process improvement plan. And this is sitting down and looking at all the process areas within the tier one level that you're adopting and what you need to do to address that. So you benchmarked where you are, you can prioritize and allocate the responsibilities and what you need to do, and then you can publicize the plan and make it work. Once you've gone through that particular stage, you obviously need to, sorry, implement it and go through the process improvement, which is implementing the changes that you've got, making sure it's properly documented, making sure you've shared it with the relevant people within your organization, and, and then making sure it's institutionalized and working. The next stage could be then to conduct a few health checks, and these can be fairly informal or they can be very detailed, but the, we tend to think of them as fairly informal checks just to validate that the changes that you've said that you're going to implement it, it the changes that you said you're going to implement are applicable to team and I and will help you going to help you be successful on the various areas that you need to address and prove to prove to the individuals that they're doing well. Sometimes you might only need one health check, another time you might need a few more. Depends if you're just doing it on a project or a program or across a whole organization. And then finally, you can look for to go for a formal certification. Um, and just to make it clear, a full formal certification is when you have two, two TMMI accredited assessors, one of much which must be a lead assessor, actually review all your artifacts, interview people, and validate that you've actually achieved the level of certification that you're going for. And that's a fairly common roadmap. However, sometimes we will see, and we get approached by a number of companies to say, we just want to go for certification. So please, can you help us do that? Even when we're addressing that, we will normally do a light um, pre-assessment, if you like, because the last thing we want to do is to go on the road of certifying somebody and for them to fail. But quite often, you can just go straight for certification if you've got the right processes and practices in place, and you can de demonstrate sufficient uh, benefit through a number of projects and programs. The other thing people may do, and, and this is where we see a lot of activity happening, is they don't want to go for certification, they just want to use it as process improvement. So they go through the assessment, the process improvement, activity, and the health checks, be pleased that they've achieved what they've wanted and that demonstrates some ROI, and then they go back to process improvement. And then occasionally they might go back to assess because they might decide we've achieved everything we can at level two and three, we've got a good foundation in place, let's now move to level four and five. So that's one particular scenario for a roadmap that can be adopted by organizations. And there's obviously a few variations on that, but that typically gives you a pretty good example. However, the one thing that you must do, and, and we really do advise, is if you're starting on the roadmap to assess, we would strongly recommend that you do a thorough um, assessment and gap analysis at the beginning because that will drill down into a reasonable amount of level of detail and enable you to have develop a very good process improvement plan. Again, you can do this self by downloading the model from the foundation, or you can use a 
companies such as uh, RBCS or Experimenters or any of the other organizations that are out there to actually achieve that. The one thing we would recommend though, is if you're doing the first gap analysis, we will strongly recommend using a lead assessor because they have most probably the depth and breadth of experience and a lot of knowledge of TMMI. And they can typically do that initial gap analysis in a fairly short period of time for you. Give you, uh, present the findings to you, and then you can run with it yourself and do what you, do what you like from the point of view of uh, demonstrating the implementation, etc. And another journey organizations go on, um, this is very kindly um, lent to us by uh, Rajesh Kanan from um, Deloitte in India, who use our assessment method. This is one of the simple roadmaps that they use when engaging with the clients. And it's very much looking at the journey that the client is going on and also making sure that they can identify a return of investment for the organization as well. And that's important to be able to do that. Another roadmap, which is um, that's probably more to demonstrate to the business uh, what the business are doing with TMI. This looks very busy. Um, this is something that Axity over in Mexico produced. We certified them to TMI level five uh, back end of last year. They've been very successful with that. And again, this is a model that they put together to present to the organization and people in the business so they could understand the importance of TMMI and why it was going to work for them. So, as I've said, you need to baseline where you are and what you're going to use from the TMI model. And it's really important that if you're going for certification, you understand that's the end goal and why you want to achieve it, or if you're going for process improvement. Just to give you an idea, um, this is a diagram that comes out of part of our, our um, one of our assessment methods, which goes through and gives you a scoring to show what's partially been achieved and largely achieved against all five levels of TMMI. Um, it's a fairly high level chart, but behind that, there's a lot of detail on all the individual processes and practices and specific goals and sub-practices, et cetera, giving very detailed scoring and very detailed information for what needs to be addressed to, uh, to enable you to turn more of, uh, more of that green and be able to uh, um, be certified if that's what you want to achieve. The other thing that you can do is to do an informal assessment yourself. Um, there's a questionnaire, again, I'm sure Rex will share the information with you earlier. You can complete a serve, um, an e-survey online takes about 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes to do. But from that, you'll get a report back showing you how mature you are, where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are. And because we've got a fair amount of data, we can actually compare you as to where you are against other people in particular industries. We can't do it across all industries, but we've got data to support a number of industries. Yeah, thanks, Martin. So, I posted that link, so it's, uh, it's there in the chat. Uh, thanks. And grab it from there. Thanks very much, Rex. And finally, the other um, considerations that you need to take in, into account when benchmarking and working out what you want to do is plan, prioritize, and communicate the journey. If this is a process improvement activity, you need to get a lot of people within the testing area and sometimes HR and those sorts of areas to help improve things like the training and mentoring and all those sorts of things. It's not typically just in the testing area that the uh, improvements need to be made. Really ensure that the relevant people have a good understanding of the TMI, TMMI model and the assessment process. And there's plenty of videos out there to introduce you into more things about the TMI model um, and also the material that's on the TMI foundation. Include the training and the qualifications for your testers and the career path. And I think that's important. Um, you, you, know, you can do TMMI professional qualification and you can do that for, our, for our public courses or e-learning and get the qualification or you can just read the model yourself. There's lots of different ways of approaching it. Provide the TMMI support and training to people within your business and develop the new processes that you need to be able to satisfy the requirements. 
this is something that we get asked by a lot of organizations is, well, I've got these gaps. And one of the big areas, especially at level three, is people say, we've got the gaps, we haven't got a risk-based testing approach or whatever. Well, again, you can do some research. And for, for example, we have a test process called ITM, Intelligent Test Method. And sometimes companies will just take there's a subset of it, i.e. the risk-based testing part of it, and just implement that. Look up for quick ways, easy ways to develop and implement new processes within your organization. Identify the quick wins and make sure you measure the ROI that you're getting. And that will ensure getting easy traction and also getting people to buy into the fact that the TMMI journey is a well worthwhile journey to go on and benefit your organization. I've tried to run through that reasonably quickly because I'm sure there's a number of questions. So um, I think the floor is open for questions, Rex. Oh, great. Thanks, Martin. So um, the first question here, having conducted a gap analysis and identify gaps, do you have any recommendations on how to address them? Right. Um, yes. And, and I'm touching on it a little bit, but where you've got the gaps, um, and, and again, it depends what you're doing. If you're doing a TMI assessment in only a part of the organization or a project, Quite often we find that if you look at other parts of the organization that are using testing, you, you most probably got some good collateral and good artifacts elsewhere in your organization. Um, and that's why sometimes adopting a TMI assessment across an organization is a really good idea because you can find pockets of excellence and you can bring that all together. But if you can't find any, anything else within your organization, you can obviously document it yourself and you can use things like the ICTQB Foundation as a knowledge of some good practice or talk to people like Rex and ourselves. Um, I'm sure we've all got uh, first documents that we can uh, provide in various areas if that helps. Yeah, absolutely. Plenty of um, resources experience. and websites. <laughs> yes, lots of experience, uh, books and so forth. So, uh, yep, good, good. Um, there's a question. What do we need to know before starting the initial gap analysis and who should do the gap analysis? That's a very good question. Um, I, I think what you should know beforehand, as I say, is what's your objective? Is it because you want to improve process? Is it because you want to demonstrate to pe uh, people within the organization that you've got a good process and you're doing a good job and um, you're, you're not the bottleneck in the, in the organization, with a lot, <laughs> which is what a lot of uh, organizations see uh, the testing or uh, software testing uh, activity to be. Um, but the key thing is understand that. And then if you can do it yourself um, and you've got access to the right information, try and do it yourself. Um, use our survey as a basis to do it. Um, so, as a number of organizations have done, send the survey to four or five people and get their view and, and see the information that you get back. Um, I must admit in our experience, we do find that companies that are really serious about TMI, they do come to companies like ourselves and yourself, Rex, obviously, and say, please, could you conduct the initial assessment? And to be honest, we can do a light assessment in a matter of three days. We can do a more detailed one in a matter of five to 10 days. It's not that big of an investment up front for the feedback and the knowledge that you'll get that you can then take forward and progress with yourself. Yep, yep, agreed. Give me a fairly quick process. And so that link that I posted in the chat, uh, people are welcome to not only use that themselves, but share that around, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, great, great. So yeah, I'd encourage everybody to do that because uh, that's a free and easy option to get uh, some some quick uh, quick feedback. Um, let's see. So for the the more uh, uh, well, I'll save that question. Let's get I got one from uh, from Sean here. Um, says with agile approaches, Rex stated during a TMMI waterfall versus agile debate, the TMMI can be translated into agile processes and practices. Does that add subjectivity into the responses or will there still be a definitive manner in which we can measure our process improvement? That's a very good question. That's something we get asked, uh, asked a lot these days and quite often people say TMMI is not relevant to Agile. 
Um, we have numerous examples of organizations where um, we've assessed them at TMI level three, for example, and then two years later, three years later, they come to us and say, we've now moved to very much to an agile development environment. Could you come and reassess us? The key thing I would say is, yes, we can. It's quite easy. TMI is totally relevant to agile and DevOps. Um, the key thing is that you need the assessors to be knowledgeable about agile and DevOps and providing they are, they will look for different artifacts. They will take photographs of Kanban boards and do things like that. You're still building quality into an application. There's still the processes to follow. Um, so it's something a, an experienced assessor will definitely be able to do and help you with. Right. I, what I said on that, on that particular webinar was, you know, the, with agile, you, you really have to kind of focus on the goals, the specific and the generic goals. Um, and understand that the practices are going to flex a little to accommodate the uh, the, the way that those goals are, are implemented. Indeed. Indeed, recently we went into one organization and we looked at seven different agile programs and everyone was being managed quite differently. And, you know, something like TMMI will bring some quality things together and help focus on ensuring quality is still delivered from each sprint. Yeah, especially the level four and five stuff where you're moving from beyond just the the focus on dynamic testing at the higher levels like like your you know levels two and three are your levels four and five you're really looking at that shift left kind of thing and of course that brings you right into you know what devops and agile are about the prevention of defects early detection and removal of defects less Indeed. reliance on that you know testing as a as a filter at the very end as was testing gets should be anyway transformed into a more confirmation activity right a confidence building activity all right we got one last question here um this uh, must be from a hardcore person <laughs> how do i become a tmmi assessor <laughs> um but very easy um there's a few prerequisites if you go to the tmi foundation there's some documents you can download that give you the prerequisites as to what you need to become a tier of my assessor. Um, obviously you need the, well, not obviously, but you do need the ICTQB foundation qualification or equivalent, and you do need to do the tier of my professional qualification. Um, and then you can apply to the foundation to become an assessor. But do check the latest uh, criteria for that because it, it has changed fairly recently. Um, some time ago, you used to have to be associated with a TMMI assessment method, and that's not quite the case anymore, I don't believe. Sorry, Rex, I can't hear you. Helps to unmute oneself, doesn't it? Oh. Um, yeah, somebody was asking about the slides and the YouTube uh, video, and yes, those, those will be posted, so this will be up shortly. You've got one last question here uh, to close us out. Uh, can the gap analyses and assessments be conducted remotely given the current pandemic restrictions? That's, that's a really good question. And the short answer is yes. We've been doing TMMI assessments worldwide remotely for about four or five years now. And I must admit when the pandemic hit us, um, it was business as usual. Uh, we do, we've been doing assessments in Mexico, Philippines, uh, China, all over the place. So. Yes, it is, it is possible to do. There are some requirements that you need to have access to the artifacts and you'll be able to interview people. We've developed techniques to speed that whole process up and enable it to happen. Yep, great. One last late, late breaking question here and then we will close. Uh, is it possible to independently assess your TMI level or can it only be done by a third party organization? This is from Cassinia. I think she's referring to not just an internal assessment, but actually getting getting your company listed on the TMMI Foundation. Is that, does that require a third party organization? Um, no, I think you can do it yourself, providing you qualify. One person has to be a TMMI assessor and the other person needs to be a TMMI lead assessor. But they can be um, employees of the organization being assessed. 
They can, yes, there are. No. In fact, there are a few companies up there who um, have, to, have done just that. And in fact, something we find, uh, we've done quite a bit of recently, we've trained people to become assessors within an organization. And then they've been the assessor and we've mm. been the lead assessor to enable that to happen. Ah, great. Well, thanks everybody for the questions. Uh, please do remember to take the survey. The link is in the chat. Um, so I ask you all to do that. If you misplace the link and you decide you want to take it, uh, just send an email to info at rbcs-us.com and we will get that out. Um, I hope you enjoyed this free webinar from RBCS. Uh, we do these free webinars as a service to the software testing community because at RBCS, we are a not just for profit company. But if you enjoy our free webinars and feel that they demonstrate solid insights into the kinds of testing challenges you face, for example, improving your test process maturity, Please make RBCS your preferred software testing vendor for any and all expert services, consulting, or training. We're always happy to provide a quote for any such help you may need. Contact us, info at rbcs-us.com. And here you can see Martin's contact information. So uh, thank you, Martin, for your time today. I appreciate it. And uh, it's been a, pl a pleasure having you on and, uh, and sharing some, some useful information about TMMI. So. We'll see, uh, see you later, Martin, and see all of uh, the participants, um, uh, hopefully face-to-face -face as the vaccines go into arms, but if not, uh, in subsequent webinars. Thank you. Thank you.